Good afternoon everyone, my name is Yusuf and today's video we will be picking up a load and drop it off in two different locations. I'm currently in Chicago. The first drop would be Calexico, California and the second would be San Diego, California. Now this is a coil, a load of coil, hopefully maybe two or three uh, bond rolls of coil, but they didn't require a um, coil rack, which means that they have already made a pallet for the coil and put it in a rack and everything is secured I just need to strap it that's what I'm thinking if I go in and they say where is your coil rack and I would say well the rate confirmation didn't say that it was required or any other dunnages uh, so fingers crossed it seems like it's gonna be okay but we will find out here in a uh, few minutes or a few hours who knows I checked in already which uh, the off the check-in office is over there obviously you cannot pull into the to their yard because uh, there are just a bunch of trucks getting loaded you have to park in a place where it says no parking uh, which is okay everyone has their four-way flashers uh, there is no other way uh, other than park on the road so uh, we'll just have to wait and see if we get a ticket or not So let me give you a recap. I first was at the, uh, door number four, that one, and then when I pulled in and then they told me, you know what, your uh, load isn't just ready, go ahead and pick the second partial which was here. So I got out of there, back in here, got loaded, and then went back in there again, got the two coils in the back and one bundle in the front. And then I could technically tarp inside, but I didn't want to tarp because there was another a driver tarping at the same time and we didn't have enough space and I did not want to get in his way so that being said I need to tarp in the cold we are in April almost mid-April and it's still cold somewhere from Oklahoma we are waiting to be called in at Love's truck care now there are a few disappointing things that I like to mention 
I stopped at a pilot yesterday, last night, at around 8 p.m. Let me go this way. At around 8 p.m. and asked if uh, I could get an estimate for replacing two tires. So the gentleman had the doors closed. He opened the doors for me, went went and got the estimate. And it was like $809. And I said, okay, well, I like the price. Can I go ahead and put it on? And then he was like, Oh, you know what? Actually, if you go down the pile, the other pilot on the road, like 30 miles down the road, they can give you a better price. Or you could try Speedco. They're usually good at this. And I said, well, I'm okay with the price. Can you go ahead and change it? And he kept on repeating the same thing, even though it was not, it was not the time where they were getting ready to close. Their hours showed that they closed at the midnight, and it was 8 p.m. And uh, after a few few minutes of going back and forth I decided you know what uh, he doesn't want to change it because he's lazy and I'm just not gonna force him to do so because if he does then it's not gonna he's not gonna be doing a good job so I uh, just drove continued driving and finally I got to this uh, loves the day after Although I wanted to call the manager and say, hey, by the way, uh, you're employing a very lazy people, just to let you know, <laughs> because I stopped uh, by your location and they didn't, they didn't change my tire. Anyways, uh, I stopped here at 3 p.m. It's currently 5.30, uh, just to change. I decided that I changed four tires. Here in a minute, I'll go out and show you guys what the problem is. Uh, so I decided to change four tires. I came here at 3, three o'clock and it's currently 5.30. It seems like there is only one mechanic working, although I see four people inside the uh, office, or three in the office, and I guess one mechanic right there uh, waiting, working on the uh, trucks. So that's taking a lot of time, uh, fortunately. I wouldn't have stopped here uh, because I, I like to go to a place that I usually go in Albuquerque, but because my situation is a little different, let me show you. It was getting to a point where... Hold on, there's a lot of wind noise. Okay, so this tire right here see that bold spot right there that concerned me I mean I knew it I wanted to change it right before it got to that point uh, and I couldn't and then if I'm gonna change it I'm gonna go ahead and change this because it's uh, really almost out too so might as well change both of them at the same time and because I'm changing these two I decided that I will change the other one on the other side and have pretty much all brand new tires and that should last me I don't know 60,000 miles. We are done changing the tires. Total damage is $2,245.87 for four tires. That includes uh, parts and labor. <laughs> Good evening from Phoenix. The sun is about to go down. That means a dirty windshield like mine will get on your nerves when it gets dark because when the, when the headlights hit uh, to the windshield all you could see is like white spots so in today's video we will show you how to clean a a windshield without actually stopping at a truck stop so all you need is a windex a bottle of water and a sponge all right now to that get the sponge Ooh, washy washy. And that, ladies and gentlemen, how you clean a windshield on the side of the road. <laughs> That being said, I'm gonna eat and then I have two more hours to drive and then we will do the rest of the trip tomorrow. Good morning from Calexico, California. We have made it. I am not sure if the, 
here is where we're gonna get offloaded but I'm pretty sure that this is the building because that's the uh, name of the company that says on my shipping labels uh, but these two pallets in the back these two coils are getting off in this location so I'm gonna on tarp just right about here put it over there and then wait for them to come show up offload me and then I'll just tarp it back up that should be pretty easy move yeah another thing I was gonna mention is if you have a winch right on top of your uh, tire like that and you don't give it enough time when you release your brakes you'll end up damaging your um, tire I've done that mistake so uh, just wanted to mention that so you don't do the same mistake these are two coils that I will be dropping them here and this uh, coil was a little bigger than the other one so it kind of got me worried for a little bit because when you strap it, it doesn't really secure the other side so I went ahead and crisscrossed two straps just so that it would be nice and secure and all the rest is going to San Diego I am currently in Calexico California and this place seems to be a ghost town nobody's here it's 6 45 in the morning <laughs> I don't know when they opened they had a phone number I called it was just not, it wouldn't connect I called it like five or six times it still wouldn't connect continue on airway road for half a mile we are almost done getting offloaded now a few tips as you are checking in to the prop and go ahead and unstrap and untarp and then don't roll your strap up or your roll your tarp up go ahead and let them know that you are ready to be offloaded and uh, that way they can start working on offloading you and in the meantime you can put your straps and tarps away in, in work while they're working on your load but anyways this will do it for this video thank you for watching i'll see you guys in the next one bye